Hi, before we start I want to show you some of my UI settings. So first let's get here, Alt V to maximize viewport, right mouse button on standard and go to viewport global settings. On the first step we need to set our viewport images and texture display resolution to 8K. That will increase your texture file display quality in the viewport especially, it is important when you use image planes with blueprints or model references. Also we need to get rid of this edge stepping. Push anti-aliasing quality to its max value. Hit apply to save your changes. Next, go to background tab. I don't like this gradient in my background, so usually I switch it to user interface solid color. Last thing you need here is a statistics tab. Hit triangle count to display trees amount in your scene. Also we need total plus selection to be active. That would give us separate information about our scene and selected meshes. Next thing we're gonna take a look at is a modifiers panel. Click on the top second button in the corner panel, go configure modifier sets, hit show buttons to display our set right below the modifiers list. Here I have a quick access to my favorite modifiers. If you want to set up the set by your own, go to configure modifier sets, hit the first line. It will open this little window where you can find all the modifiers on the left. On the right are your preset sets, below is a buttons amount and here are the buttons themselves. So for example you can type any amount you need here, drag and drop modifiers from the left area or you can simply start to type their names instead of scrolling down this list and searching for certain modifier. After that name your set like 5. Press save, so it will appear in your modifier set list and hit OK. There is a whole bunch of scripts for 3ds Max that can be found on the internet. Let's take a look at my favorite ones. Ok, so the first one is the FB sub object pivot. You can find it at funkybunnies3d.com. So what it does, let's create a simple box, convert it to editable poly, select an edge and chamfer it. As you may notice, I use hotkeys and quads a lot. We will break them all down in the next chapter. Let's return to our box. For example, I need this edge to be higher in its face Y direction. So I select this face, press Ctrl num 6, I have assigned the script to this hotkey. And now we see how our gizmo has changed. Also, our reference coordinate system has changed to working and the center flyout is on use transform coordinate center. Now we are able to make transformations in the selected sub object coordinate system. Another cool feature with this tool is that you can align your object pivot with the selected sub-object. While you are in the sub-object level, press insert on your keyboard to enter the effect pivot mode. Select a face and you will see how the pivot gizmo appears. Press Ctrl num 6 and it will align according to your sub-object direction. Now press 6 on your keyboard to exit the sub-object level, switch to the local coordinate system and you will see how it has changed its pivot direction to our previously selected phase. Alright, our next indispensable plugin is the improved face rated novels, which can be found on the script spot. You can find links to free or full versions here, but I highly recommend you to buy it because it's worth every penny. So let's get back to 3ds Max to see what it does. We'll create one model in two versions, high poly and low poly. Let's begin with high. I create a simple box with Ctrl right mouse button quote menu. Press F4 on my keyboard to display wireframe on shaded mode and convert it to editable poly with my numpad del hotkey. Add a chamfer modifier, switch it to quad chamfer operation, so we have one more segment in the chamfer profile, and then let's make it curved by lowering the tension value. Right mouse button on spinners to reset the value to 0 and type 0, 0,5. Also add one more segment above, and now if you disable wireframe by F4, you can see this nice and smooth edge here. Next thing they're gonna do is we will add some support loops to tighten our edge shading. Add edit poly modifier, go to edge sub object level, select a ring and hit connect. In this pop up, make two segments, divide them up by increasing the pitch value, hit OK and repeat the same for the other sides here and here. Finally, we apply turbo smooth modifier, set iterations to 2 and our high poly is ready. Now we'll make a low poly version. Let's duplicate an object with shift drag copy. 
and get rid of TurboSmooth and edit poly modifiers. As it is a low poly, poly count means a lot, so let's display our statistics which we have edited in the beginning of this video with 7 on the keyboard. In the left column you can see the total poly count for all objects in your scene. In the right only selected are shown. So this high poly has 94 or 8 trees and this only 300. So let's decrease the poly count as much as we can. I set my segments back to 1 with right mouse button and switch it back to the standard chamfer mode. But for now it looks quite sharp, so we add another edit poly modifier on top of stack, select a whole sub object and assign only one smoothing group to it. Ok, now we have very smooth edges, but also shading artifacts on the sides. And this is the time it comes for our script. Enable EFV nulls, press generate and it's done. As you may see, now we've got the same objects. But there is a difference between them. This one have 44 trees and this one 94 or 8 trees. Next script I'm gonna show you is named CR Align Pivot to Selection. You can find it under the name Universal Pivot to Selection on scriptspot.com. Here's a download link which will open this text file. By the way, I forgot to mention how to install the script files inside 3ds Max. First way is simply drag and drop your script file to the viewport and you will see installation guide or successfully installed system message. Another way is to use script menu. Go to scripting, new script, copy this text, jump back to Max, paste it and then go tools, evaluate all. It will save your script inside 3ds Max. And then go to customize user interface. And now you can find your script here. This script name begins with align, so I can find it simply by typing ALI, align, pivot to selection or by its category, CR. Anyway, you can always find installation info on the script's developer site. Ok, we'll return to this menu later. So, for now let me show you how it works. I have the script assigned to Ctrl Shift O. By default my pivot is set to box bottom center. I want it to be this face center, so I go to face up object level, select this face and press Ctrl Shift O. Escape sub object mode and now you see that my pivot is here. Alright, once again, select this face, Ctrl Shift O and you see my pivot jumps to this face. Our next script is the detach elements. As always you can find it on scriptspot.com. Follow the download link, copy this text, go back to Max, scripting, new script. Paste it here, tools, evaluate all. So I assigned it to Ctrl Shift D. As you can see, I created this object in my scene. It consists of multiple elements. So let's go to element mode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and etc. So when I press Ctrl Shift D, each of these elements becomes an object itself. Next script is called Loop Regularizer. So what it does, let's go back to 3ds Max. Create a simple plane, make it 4x4 four four segments and convert it to editable poly. Press G to hide your grid. Select several polygons, for example these four. Press right mouse button, hit regularize. So it converts a selection into a circular shape. Text Tools is one of the most popular scripts for 3ds Max. It has a large variety of frame wrapping functions. You can read more about it on its developer's site. Here is a link for the installation file. So let's get back to Max. I have already unwrapped this piece of geometry, but for now it has no smoothing groups assigned. So let's run Text Tools, go Tools, Smoothing Groups from UV Shells. And now it looks like it should be. As I mentioned earlier, these moving groups were applied by UV islands, so here you can see them on my unwrap. Afterwards, I can apply my EFV normals add-on. And now everything looks completely fine. Vertex Cleaner is a great add-on fixing vertices issues after boolean operations. Let's get back to Max. Right now I have these three separate objects in my scene. Select one of them. 
and run Pro Boolean. Go to advanced options, select remove only visible to remove invisible edges on each face, then hit start picking and pick your operands in the viewport. Alright, convert it to editable poly, go to vertex sub object level and let's take a closer look at it. So what do we see here? There is a bunch of unwanted vertices which we gonna quickly get rid of. So I press right mouse button, vertex cleaner, set the threshold if needed, clean it and all these vertices are removed. The last scripts we're gonna take a look at are called AC, MS, Hard and Smooth Edges. You can find it in this Google Drive folder link. I found this in one of Alex Senechal's tutorials. He's a great concept designer, you can find his page on ArtStation. So here is a simple sphere, press F4 to display wireframe, go to face sub object level, select several faces, then the shift click on edges, convert selection to edge border and now press shift 4 to harden edges. I have this assigned to shift 4. Same goes for the smooth edges script, so select same edges, press shift 3 and they are smooth again. Alright, so our last chapter would be about how to assign hotkeys, creating and editing toolbars and quotes. Let's start with the toolbars. Earlier in this video I showed you text tools and EF3 normals. The icons I put over left and right on the main toolbar. So how to bring them here? Go to Customize, Customize User Interface, Toolbars tab and search here for text tools. I start to type on my keyboard TEX and here it is. Then I simply drag and drop text tools button there I want. If something went wrong, right click delete button. Also, you can only sign our scripts or any internal functions within group or category lists here. Okay, our next step is quads. Quads are very similar to pi minus in Maya. Actually, if you click right mouse button on the screen, it will appear. As you may see, it consists of four areas. Here are three quads, cause the top left is empty now. Yellow square icon show active quad command list. So you see move, rotate, scale and so on. And here is the same. Click on the next square and you'll see left bottom quad count list. Here I have vertex cleaner and this is where it is in the menu. Above is a regularized edge loop, but it is active only in edit poly mode. Also there are more quad menus. You can see there are hotkeys in this drop down. I use modeling quad a lot. It has all my primary shapes, so instead of diving in create tab and draw box like this, or even create any other object from this list like sphere, I prefer to click right mouse button and here they are. You can add any command or operation to any of these quotes, so simply go back to customize window, search for a command like pro boolean and drag and drop it inside. Again, if something went wrong, right mouse button, delete menu item. And finally we come to hotkeys. All these quads, toolbars and quick access menus are very cool, but if you want to be really fast in your work, hotkeys are required. Let's begin with our add-ons. Group, main UI, change category to ACMS, select any action, put your cursor here and press any combination on your keyboard. You will see in the line below if that combination is already assigned to another action or not. Hit Assign to apply changes and it's done. Now you see that the fields above are empty and if we pull this all the right, we'll see our combination here. Press Remove and it will remove all the combinations. Ok, let's take a look at our next add-on category. This is Catomic. Here is our EFV novels add-on. And as you may notice, this customized menu is the same over all tabs, so it is a choice of taste what to have in hotkey or in quote or even as an icon in a toolbar. After all, I highly recommend you to save your changes separately to be able to open them in other versions of 3ds Max or go to Customize, Save Custom UI Scheme, which saves the interface layout, keyboard shortcuts, menus and so on. Select Max Default folder or any other on your drive and press Save. Control right mouse button to open modeling quad, create a box, go to Modify tab, 
right mouse button on these sliders to reset, same goes for world position sliders, now del to convert it to editable poly, Control shift s to activate swift loop tool, simple click creates an edge loop, shift click creates a flow connect loop and Control shift click removes an edge loop. You can see swift loop button enabled on the modeling tab in the ribbon above. Well, next hotkeys are 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 to go to vertex, edge, border, face or element level. Press current sub object key again or 6 it will exit to object mode. F4 view edge faces toggle, F3 wireframe toggle. Press Q to activate smart select toggle with rectangular selection, drag your mouse to select some faces. Press Q again to enable circular selection. When you hold ALT key it will deselect a region in any selection mode you use. And with ignore backfacing enabled, pen selection tool becomes really handy. Shift plus to grow selection, shift minus to shrink selection. Let's go to edge level. Select an edge, hit G for grid, display toggle, Alt L, select a loop from edge, Alt R, select a ring. If you press Ctrl Alt C, it will collapse your selection. Once again. Now select an edge and press Ctrl G. It will remove a loop. Add more segments back with Swift loop and let's talk about constraints. You can transform your element along its edge face or normal. So select an edge, here you see these constraint buttons. Press Ctrl Num 1 to enable edge constraint and move any element so you see it is moving only along the edges. It is useful when you need to make same edge flow as on the neighbor. Next thing is face constraint, Ctrl num 2. Let me create some more segments to demonstrate. Select a vertice and it will move only in its face plane. I have also Ctrl num 3 to constrain to normal and Ctrl 0 to constrain to known. Ctrl Z to undo, Ctrl Y to redo, Shift Z to return to previous viewport view, Shift Y redo viewport operation. Next we need some copies of this object, so go to object mode by pressing 6, shift drag to copy, select both these objects, shift drag again. When select one of these editable poly objects, Ctrl shift A to attach and pick other objects. Go to element mode, select an element, shift D to detach it or Ctrl shift D to use detach element script. Press Alt Q for isolation toggle, when press insert to enable effect pivot only mode. And after let's see snaps toggle mode, press S, drag your pivot to this corner so it snaps, right mouse button on snaps toggle icon. On the first tab you see snap two elements, on the tab option you should enable axis constraints, so you could snap by each axis individually. Ok, snap pivot to this point, press insert to exit pivot mode. Press E to rotate, I have already my angle snap on, press A to disable it. Let's take a look at some pivot hotkeys. Alt O for center pivot. Then go to face level, select a face, press Ctrl Shift O, align pivot to selection. And the last one is the sub object pivot. Select a face and press Ctrl numpad 6. Now it's time for polygon modeling hotkeys. Select an edge ring, press Ctrl num 5 to enter connect settings. Go to vertices level, select several vertices and press Ctrl Shift E to connect vertices. Press LC to cut, it is very useful with the snaps toggle on. Right mouse button to disable this tool, select some faces and press Shift E. It will open extrude settings. Press Shift R to repeat last operation. Shift B to bridge and Shift I to inset. Let's delete these polygons. Go to border level, select a border and press Alt P to get this hole. Alright, now select these vertices and press Alt Shift W to enter weld vertices settings. If you want to weld them manually, then press Ctrl Shift W to enter target weld mode. One of my favorite tools in 3ds Max is the Quick Slice. Press Alt Shift C. It is very powerful with a snap toggle mode on, so you can slice your objects by an hour once. Last thing here is chamfer. 
select several edges, press Ctrl Shift C and drag. Okay, smoothing hotkeys. The first one is called After Smooth Selection. So select your entire object, press Alt Shift A and it will smooth it according to a certain angle which you can find in the smoothing groups section. By default it is set to 45 degrees. You may see that this triangle face is hardened now, so let's take a look what will happen with 180 degrees. After smooth it again. And now there is no hard edges at all. The next section I'm gonna show you is hard selection. Let's select again the entire object and press Shift 5. So now you see every face is hardened. Select it again and press Shift 6 to smooth selection. Then select some edges and press Shift 4 to hard edge selection. And as before, same for Shift 3 smooth edge selection. Ok, alignment hotkeys. Let's select these two edges and align them by Y axis. I press Alt num 2 and here it is. Same for these two, I press Alt num 1 to align them by X axis and for the Z axis, let me make some changes. Select this 3 and press Alt num 3. Also sometimes you may have such ugly faces, so let's make it plainer. I press Ctrl Shift M. And the last method to make planar selections or alignments is to use scale. So let's again move this vertex. Select these four, divide this one. Press F12 to display transform type in dialog toggle. Press R several times to enable non-uniform selection and then right mouse button on Z axis slider to set it to zero. Ok, they are very close to finish, but there are still some hotkeys that I want to show you. First, let's select some polygons of this object. Go to face level, select these faces. If you press Alt H, it will hide your selection. If you press Alt U, it will unhide it. And if you press Alt I, it will hide unselected. There are various types of selection in 3ds Max. For example, if you hold Ctrl and left click, you will add one more element to your selection, but if you press LT and enable step mode and do the same with Ctrl held, it will select it like this. Also you can achieve similar result with Shift. Hold it and simply drag these square polygons. If you select a face and then move your cursor to the neighbor with Shift held, you will select a face stream. Also, this goes to edges with edge loop and edge rim. Sometimes you have your objects rotated in the world, so it looks like this. And you want to transform it in this side direction, so go to local coordinate system, press num1, and you see how our gizmo has changed. Also the same for transform gizmo, press num1, and you can move it in local coordinate system. Press num3 to go back to view coordinate system. Let's take a look at this line. I have assigned extrude modifier to it, so it now has geometry. Let's give it turbo smooth with two iterations. Go back to line and now we see only this spline. But if I press Ctrl num4, it will activate show end result. So it shows us what we will see after applying all these modifiers from stack. Let's add edit body here and take a look from top view on this curvature. It is not smooth enough, so let's go to edge level, select an edge and press Alt Shift Q. This is set flow and it distributes these edges along this curvature evenly. And our final chapter is about unwrapping. Add unwrap UVW modifier, open UV editor and here are our UVs for now. Select a face, press tilt. This is quick planar map. Grow selection and deselect this face with Alt. Quick planar map again. Let's quickly unwrap it all with flatten mapping. And now if you press F on your keyboard, it will enable select by element UV toggle. 
so you can select the whole UV island. If you press F again, you will be able to select separate faces. Now let's take a look at alignment options. Select this vertex, drag it over right, then select an edge, press C to select the whole loop, and then press Y to align it vertically. Same goes here. Drag this vertex, select an edge, C to select the whole loop, press X to align it horizontally. And the last one is Stitch. Select an edge, Shift S to weld them together. Shift S again and Shift S again. So now we have only one UV island. Thanks for watching. Follow me on AdStation and see you in the next video.